Well, hello, everyone. We have Maddie Heinzelman on our 20 Questions episode this week. Maddie, say hi to the people. Hi, guys. Maddie, what is the worst way that people misspell your name in this world? Okay. Well, my sister's name is Gabby, so a lot of people get those confused, which I can understand because, like, Maddie, Gabby, like, two syllables, whatever. Yeah. But my last name is... I honestly, I don't know if I'm biased, but I feel like it's pretty, like, phonetic, like, if you just, like, kind of read it out, but I've gotten, like, Hinzelman, Hazelman, totally. just a lot of variations, I don't know. There are a lot of variations. I 100% have misspelled Gabby and Maddie, because you do I-E, and Gabby's just strict yeah. Y, but I got Oh, it yeah, down. I didn't think about that. <laughs> I got it down now. Heinzelman is 100% phonetic, but people get worried. So that actually was off the cuff question. That's one that I didn't preempt Maddie on. And she is such a rock star. She can handle it. But for those that have seen, you know, the drill of 20 questions for those who haven't, it's simple. This is when I could come in at youth ministry. Uh, Maddie is a junior in our program and I asked her 20 questions and we get to get to know her more. So Maddie, without further to do, my first question to you, the question that the people want to know is what is your favorite type of shoe to wear in the summer? So I would say Birkenstocks because you can dress them up and down. They're very, very comfortable. But my dog chewed up my Birkenstocks. So I just kind of wore flip-flops the whole summer and it was fine. But the comfort in Birkenstocks is just amazing. It's amazing. When you break them in, yeah. That was the right answer. Um, I completely agree. I wear them very often, as you all know. Um, when do you think you started wearing Burks? Was it like a couple years ago or when you were like junior high, elementary? Like eighth grade. So like two ish years ago. Yeah. It, it's the perfect shoe. It's, it's classy, but it's kind it's of so great. Yeah. Uh, is there, I, I don't even need to say anything more. That's just the answer that I would love to hear starting off. Um, Maddie, my next question is, what's one good thing about e-learning? And for, for context, Maddie has told me that e-learning is actually going really well. So this isn't a question I'll ask every kid because I think a lot of your peers uh, could not come up with one. But let's, let's start off with some positivity. What's a good thing that's come from e-learning for you? I mean, I honestly really like it because I've kind of accepted the fact that, like, at least for us, like, being in the building would just like not be the same. So I just like kind of being able to get out of my bed like 10 minutes before class and just kind of like chill. And I can like go downstairs and like get a snack whenever I want. And like if I'm cold, I can like have blankets and stuff. I don't know. I just feel like it's a lot cozier at my house versus at school. It's a great word, cozy. Uh, way more blankets in e learning than regular learning. It's pretty hard to pull a blanket off in history class at a, a local high school, but that's a great answer. And, and we're so happy there are positives coming for you in that. Speaking of school, Maddie, what is your favorite subject in school? Right now, I really like my biology class just because it's like really fascinating to me. And I also like math, except sometimes it can be really frustrating when you don't know what's going on. Okay. So when I know what's going on, I like math too, but if I'm confused, then it's not really that fun. So no one likes to be confused. Um, what's the kind of like topic you're talking about in math right now? Um, like trig identities. And it's just like, there's literally like more letters than numbers and it's just not. It's a great joke when people start to realize like, I thought math was numbers. Why are we talking about all these different letters? Like there's definitely way more letters. It's, I don't even know how it's math, but. I don't know. Fine. Lucky you're not Aiden Jimenez, who I asked, what is your favorite letter last week on 20 questions, just to really mess with him. But there's a lot of letters in math, too. Um, so, so on the theme of, of school and homework, do you listen to music when you're doing homework? Uh, and if so, which genre of music? Okay. I listen. Ella does this, too, because I introduced her to it. There are these videos on YouTube. Highly recommend if you haven't heard of these. It's like ASMR, but like not what you think. It's like you're in a library, specifically a Hogwarts library. So you can like hear the background of like the fire and like people like writing on like with a quill on parchment and like, I don't know. So I listen to that when I'm doing like, um, like English or 
like science where I kind of need to like focus a little bit more because the background noise is better than silence um or words but I listen to like music with words when I do math like fun music totally Maddie that's like the greatest answer I could ever ask for (laughs) first of all you said quill and parchment in your answer which I did not see coming at any point um that actually makes a lot of sense it's probably really focusing because you feel like you're actually in a line yeah you kind of still feel cozy that's awesome and it's not distracting as you said when when math has so many letters sometimes your songs having a lot of words can be tough too um Maddie your favorite holiday what would you say to that I really like Easter I like Christmas which could be like I feel like that's very popular yeah. But I like Easter just because, like, it's so fun. Like, you wake up, and you, like, get in your little dress, and you go to church, and then you, like, have brunch and, like, at Grandma's house or whatever. I don't know. I just think it's fun. It's, like, a lot more, like, like it's equal in importance, but it's, like, a lot less low-key than, like, other holidays, like Christmas. I feel like it's just, like, so in your face sometimes. So well, I don't know. I really like Easter. For so long too, right? And and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Easter's like, it's like a week, right? And you're like building, you're preparing for it. Um, that's great. And it's spring too, which I think is. Yeah, a, it's like the beginning of spring, which is motivating. It's super motivating. And that's a great answer. Um, I'm glad you didn't say Christmas. But I do want to talk about Christmas in this next question. When do you think it's appropriate to start listening to Christmas music? Some people have like very strict boundaries on this. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But tell the people when you think it's appropriate. I feel like definitely after Thanksgiving, like you can kind of get in the holiday spirit before, like in between Halloween and Thanksgiving. But I don't, I would not want to listen to Christmas music in between. Cause that's, I don't know. That's a great like, answer. It doesn't sound like you, like, are very strict on it. You're just kind of like, it it doesn't make sense to skip Thanksgiving and have two months of Christmas music. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me. I guess, like, I wouldn't, like, I don't know. I'm not, like, like, I don't have, like, a very strong stance. It's just, like, not something I would do. I don't know. Totally. And I feel like that's kind of where we've landed on in society, too. It's like, hey, November, towards the end, you're going to start to hear it in stores. Um, you're going to start to see decorations and all that stuff before then, but the music's not blaring, hitting you over the top of the head with it. Um, I, I approve of that state of that stance. Uh, let's, let's talk about meals that your family makes at home and what might be your favorite meal of that type. Okay. So my grandma, I think she started making it. My mom's made it before. It's like, I don't know if you've been to PF Chang's, but they have those like lettuce boats, like where it's like, it, they're so good there's like the lettuce and then it has like ground beef or like beyond meat whatever um with like vegetables and i don't know it's just so good it's like my favorite thing maddie pl- plugging beyond meat in this i felt like yeah. um number number one they're incredible and and they feel really clean right like you don't feel that's the other thing yeah it's like not as heavy and like you can eat more of them so Oh, good. <laughs> I eat more of them. Don't don't mistake that. No, that's a really good one. So so is it a recipe that has like is it always the same? Like do you always have like pork or beef or is it kind of like maybe you throw in different ingredients for those lettuce wraps? I feel like the seasoning is definitely the same because it has like the taste, but like I've made it before with like like not ground beef like beyond meat or whatever and it tasted the same because it's just like the texture and like the flavor I guess like I sure I'm sure you could add like whatever vegetables you want this is this is a sub comment but there's always like a food of a year and and obviously everyone has their feelings on 2020 but I feel like the food of 2020 is beyond meat like it's been in every definitely like the last time there was like bacon 10 years ago avocados eight years oh yeah (laughs) quinoa kale they've popped up but like impossible burger that's that's the one of 20 2019 2020 um let's talk about you uh you have two siblings that are younger than you than yourself but i want to know what it's like to be the oldest uh i'm the youngest sibling in my family so i'm the bubba of your of your type of approach but you have bubba and you have gabby how's it feel to be the oldest yeah i actually really like it because like I'm, I kind of like, not in an authoritative way, I just kind of like being in charge, I guess, yeah. like setting examples, 
I don't know. I really like it. Totally. And sometimes, you, yeah. No, no. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's kind of annoying because, like, like through like different processes, like college, like I'm gonna be the first one to go through that. So, like, I won't have somebody to help me with that, like an older sibling. So, that's gonna be a downfall. But I like it overall. I feel like from how I've seen you interact with your siblings, you do that authority really well. Like, it's not this like controlling prideful thing but it's kind of like hey I am the oldest I know what I'm doing here more than uh maybe your experiences have led you to and you're a great older sister um favorite state uh that you've been to not Illinois but what's your favorite state in the union that you love so we went to South Carolina we've drove it, driven through it and like stopped in Charleston and we've been to Myrtle Beach for spring break and I don't know I just really liked it like the tropical weather and just I don't know I especially like Charleston but yeah, yeah. Was, there good, was there good food in South Carolina did you and did you appreciate yeah I did because we we drove to Florida and then we like went up the coast a little bit so we stopped in like Savannah and Charleston and like the food was just like especially the seafood was just like so fresh and just so good yeah Classic Midwest, yeah. we get anything that's not like flown in an airplane seafood. We're like, wow, this is incredible. This is like yeah. what real seafood tastes like. Um, speaking of your travels, you and I have been in Virginia, along with a lot of people from Winneka, at a camp called Covenant Mountain Mission. Um, Winneka has paired with them throughout the years. And we went on a, a trip two years ago. And what did you like about that um, that camp, Covenant Mountain Mission Bible Camp in Jonesville, Virginia? Well, I really liked it, first of all, and I think, like, obviously, definitely want to keep going if we can, and if anybody's watching this, you should definitely come, um, but I really liked, I was with Mrs. or Squirrel and, like, the fifth graders, and I liked making a connection with them, just, like, based off of their interests or, like, whatever's going on, especially because, like, we didn't even, like, know each other, really, like, before, obviously. So I don't know. I just thought it was like super valuable and like really interesting and fun. Totally. Yeah. Shout out Rachel yeah. Rest Squirrel. And yeah, there's something so unifying about like a week of camp being together, um, meeting some different folks, all being like working towards the common goal. Um, and Maddie, you did so great with those fifth grade kids. That was such a fun week. Um, yeah, we really hope we can get back there soon. Next question, favorite TV show right now? Not of all time, but if you were like throw one on t uh, today, what one do you think you'd put on? Definitely Stranger Things. I think also because it's fall, you know, like the ambiance of it. I don't know. I just love it so much. I just think it's so good. So I've watched literally the first episode and then I just couldn't continue. <laughs> give, me, give me a pitch for why I should watch episode two and beyond. Okay. Okay. It's like, it's kind of creepy. So you're really selling me so far. If that's, no, no, no. Okay. Um, let's see. It's just really, it's just such a compelling plot. And like the eighties, like I was, I didn't even live in the eighties and I feel like nostalgic because of it. I don't know. just like the music, the vibes, I guess. I don't <laughs> I don't know. I if just think you were to make a bumper sticker off of this episode of 20 <laughs> Questions, I think it would be, I didn't even live in the 80s, but I feel nostalgic. That's, that's the end yeah. of the in 2020. Um, no, that, I, that makes sense. And a lot of people say that. I was born in 91, so I'm even too old for that, or too young for that. Um, but I, I totally get that it feels pretty cool to enter into that in that time. Um, what is one hobby that you've been doing in 2020, you know, kind of through this quarantine COVID season, what, what's Maddie Hanselman been doing? I feel like in general, just like, especially in quarantine, cause like we were home all the time. I just like organized a lot of my stuff, like my desk, my closet, based on my whole room, which I feel like is great because it's nice to just come home to like a nice clean room, whatever. And I don't know, it just like makes me more productive. Um, but I also just like to do like, especially more during the summer, like just friendship bracelets, really fun. Totally. I don't know, yeah. That's awesome. Clean room, clean mind, kind of instead of being super scattered all over the place, which can be so easy in 2020, to kind of just feel like, here's my lane, this is what I'm doing, my desk is organized, that's what we want to be yep. about. Favorite season 
Fall, winter, spring, summer. Go. I feel like fall, just because I like, yeah, the ambiance. I feel like <laughs> I say that a lot, but I don't know. And like the weather, especially in the Midwest, like it's the weather can be so polarizing, like super hot or like freezing. So it's just a good like middle ground. And I don't know. I just like Halloween too. It's so fun. So, so would you say we're still in fall? It's like a couple days before Halloween, end of October. Are we still in fall? Definitely. I mean, we're not, I, I this doesn't feel like winter to me. Yeah. So I guess, and this is not summer. So I feel like going. Is it, does it become winter when we have our first like snowfall that sticks? Is that kind of a, a changing point? I feel like, yes. Maybe I know it snowed a couple days ago, but like it melted like in almost instantly. So yeah. it wasn't really. It was like exciting, but it was like eh. So yeah, I would say like once the snow kind of starts to stick and like the afternoons get darker faster or earlier. Yes. Winter. For those that are watching, uh, you know the day we post this Sunday, uh, daylight savings time. Turn your clock over. You gain an hour of sleep, which is really fun, but we lose an hour of daylight on that afternoon time, which is always a bummer. So plug for daylight savings time. Next question. What is one word you would hope that people would use to describe you? I hope people would think that I'm easygoing just because I feel like I am, but I can be kind of shy, especially like if I haven't met somebody before. So I'd like, I wouldn't want them to think that I like, wouldn't want to be around them. I just like get kind of shy. So I hope people would think that about me. I would absolutely co-sign that statement. Easy going. Kind of just really take take the take the momentum what, that comes with the best attitude possible. That's that's what I see you as, Maddie, and that's awesome that you see that in yourself as well. Favorite memory that you have had at either Covenant Harbor or Covenant Point, the two camps that we go to in the Central Conference. So I used to go to Harbor a lot more when I was like in elementary school and stuff. And I just really liked like the waterfront and the big games that we played. And like, I guess I've never been to Covenant Point for like mainland stuff. So I guess I can't really compare it, but I don't know. I just really liked it. That aspect of Harbor, I liked a lot about Harbor, but that especially. And for Point, I really like the island because I went there a lot in middle school, like for camp and stuff. And it was just really, really fun and unique. Do you love water, Maddie? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm picking up the lakefront. Let's talk about it at Harbor. And then the island is obviously surrounded by water. Um, I'm a big water person too. Growing up in Minnesota, all the lakes. Yeah. It's so relaxing. And it makes me feel nostalgic, just like Stranger Things for you. <laughs> in the 80s. Yeah. And those are great, great questions. What is one overrated dessert that we have? I feel like peanut butter ice cream, like like ice cream with peanut butter in it. I don't know what it is. I just really do not like it. So but I like Reese's in... peanut butter cups. Okay, that might be my most overrated so candy, but that's not the point. Are you saying ice cream that's flavored like peanut butter? Are you saying that people put like a vanilla ice cream scoop and then like a spoonful of peanut butter, like almost as a topping. Like when it's like swirled in kind of. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't like it. I don't know why though. Cause I like butter. regular peanut butter. Do you ever just go for the spoonful and eat peanut butter plain? Sometimes or like with apples or something. I don't know. There you go. That's a, that's a better option. It <laughs> feels a little healthier. Yeah. Um, no, that's a good answer because people go nuts for peanut butter. They really do. Yeah. Not Harper. Harper Breidenbach, if you're listening. Oh, yeah. I just want to allow you to do that. But people love peanut butter. Um, And I think that is a good overrated ice cream. I I really support that take. Um, If anybody is really pro ice cream, comment up below and tell us why it's good. Uh, Favorite Bible verse. What is is one that comes to mind? Oh, okay. I wrote this down. Um, Jeremiah 2911. Should I read it or should I do you no? Know? Okay. Um, for I know the plans I have for you. Wait, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope in the future. And I just like it, especially now because things are obviously so uncertain and like 
there are a lot of obstacles just like in 2020 in general so I feel like it's important to like take a step back and look at the bigger picture and like kind of think about how those obstacles you can let them consume you and upset you but you have to think about how like they grow they either grow you as a person or think about the positive parts of it and like how God has a plan for you so I really like that one I'm not going to have any commentary because you said everything I can say. I'm expecting you're going to give the lesson on Sunday now for, for a youth group. I'll sure. <laughs> so great, Maddie. Amen. What a great, what a great verse to have. What is one hope that you have for the year 2021? People keep talking about, I just can't wait for 2020 to be over. What do you think is something you hope for at the turn of the calendar? I honestly hope that, COVID just kind of settles down a little bit. I don't know if it'll do it by itself, but maybe different leaders can change some things and help it get at bay a little bit more. So I kind of just hope that and that we can kind of like try to minimize it instead of like live with it because I feel like other countries have like completely eradicated it, right? I don't know. Did New Zealand? New Zealand's in a game. know about that? New Zealand's yeah. in a game. You did a great job dropping the word eradicate. My goodness. Somebody had a spell. Yeah. <laughs> Not spelling vocab. Um, no, that's yeah. a really I, – I appreciate everything you're saying there, Maddie. I think it's so spot on. You know, it might not eradicate fully right away, but can we kind of yeah. set it down? Can we be minimizing yeah. a lot of the problems sure. to just make things better? Um, I really like how you were framing that. Uh, wrapping up with the last two questions that we ask everybody on 2020, or uh, not 2020, 20 questions. <laughs> Favorite part of Winneka Covenant Youth Ministry? What comes to mind? So I just like the people, and I always feel like so welcome, and like so I just feel like I always just have a really good time because like we live kind of like 20 ish, 25 minutes away from church, so. I think it's really special that like with the exception of Harper and Ella who I love but um it's special to like come to the same group every time versus like if I were to go to a church like in Lake Forest or whatever a lot of the kids would probably go to my school yeah and so I don't know I just really like that environment at Winneka. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of separation from like daily school rhythms right? Yeah. You know, even yeah. if it's the kids that go to your same school, just to kind of have some separation from that to enter into a place with, with different people is super awesome. And I, I co-sign that thought. Maddie, what's one thing you want people to know about you as you sign off? Um, I want people to know that I really like youth group and the church. And I think it's a great way to stay involved and just, I don't know, stay active, I guess. And if you're watching this and you don't already come, I really think you should come because <laughs> it's really fun. Maddie, like putting over the youth group over herself, just so selfless, so humble. You have been an incredible guest. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you, Joel. 20 questions. I keep wanting to say 2020. It's uh, just that year. 2020. It's what, what the season we're in. But, uh, you know, in this time, I'm still working. I'm still working on a sign off. But if you're going to ask one question, you might as well ask 20 questions. Join us next time, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye.